This message entitled Gratitude Adjustment. I told you that my favorite TikToks or my favorite Instagram Reels are when the chiropractors snap people's back into. I, I just love it because they breathe on. I told you what they do, breathe, 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 and what they do. <sighs> now, who went home in the feds watching and now all you saw in your timeline was chiropractors? Anybody? I mean, I love how they just crack their back. I love how the comedians do it where they break a skeleton in half and like just breathe, breathe, breathe. <laughs> because they're trying to adjust them. Something this can preach. I had one of my members who's a chiropractor inbox me and say, Pastor Mike, I don't know if this is going to help you preach or not, but I just felt led to send it to you. The reason we pop backs like that, the reason we pop bones like that, because something is locked. Y'all miss what I just said. He said, I had a patient this morning whose hip was locked and it was causing him a lot of pain to stand upright and walk. He said, so I had to massage it first to get it ready. He said, but that sound you hear is us unlocking some stuff. I had no idea when I got my gratitude adjusted, it would unlock my overflow. I don't know who I'm preaching to in here. And can I speak early in this little message of mine that I don't speak a new house, I don't speak a new car, all that's going to come because God is good. If you don't do nothing else for me the last 34, 35 days of this year, unlock some stuff. And how do I know you have matured in God? You have matured in God because the younger me would say unlock a door so I can walk into something. But the mature me now says unlock in me everything that's locked up so I can become the me God called me to be. Now you ain't got to say amen, only three of y'all gonna catch this, but there's more in me that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Sometimes it just needs to be unlocked. We talked about a gratitude adjustment, a gratitude adjustment that is so important. Can you put this in your phone? Put this in your notes. It's a good quote for you, okay? Here's what we understand right here. As we went through this week, I reflected on the message and I was thinking about how does gratitude help with execution? Because remember, I told you we're moving you from expectation to what? execution. So I began to ponder on the fact of how does gratitude help with execution? Put this in your notes if you don't mind. Gratitude is the bridge between our excitement to start and our execution to finish. Gratitude is the bridge between our excitement to start and our execution to finish. Now, I want you to be honest and don't lie in church. Who's a great starter? Oh, I start, I start to die tomorrow. Don't play with me. I tell you, I'll get it. Hey, we, we going no meats all week. I'll start it, but guess what? Your boy may not finish or execute it. You want to know what I discovered? Gratitude is the bridge from the excitement to start and the execution to what? finish. This is where I get excited. Why PMJ? My goal may be to drop 30, but if I can have gratitude that at least I drop three, it gives me the fuel to keep going. And I've discovered that so many people are stuck at a start and never see the finish because we don't know how to be grateful for the progress in the middle. Ooh, three of y'all caught that right there. Now, everybody's not going to catch this, but for three of you who do catch it, I'm not going to talk to everybody because some of y'all can only shout when you finish. I want to thank God for where I am right now because I may not be where I want to be, but I'm a whole lot further than where I come from. Can I have old school church? He brought me from a mighty long way. That's why I like old school music. I've been listening to old school music. I've been listening to Azusa and different things like that all week because their music was wrapped in having gratitude for the journey. Their music was wrapped up in saying, God, I know there's still more that you have to do for me, but I just want to pause for the cause. Help me, God, and just say thank you. And I know Thanksgiving just passed, and I know you may not have had the best week, or maybe you had an incredible week, but Grandmama taught me we all may not have the same reason, but everybody in here got a reason just to tell God, thank you. I told you on last week that Psalms 100 verse 4 says, enter into his gates 
with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him. That's critical. Be thankful to him. What did I tell you? Enter into his gates and his courts symbolizes coming into God's presence. Coming into God's presence and we must come into God's presence with a spirit of gratefulness. We need a gratitude adjustment. Now let's define for those who weren't here, gratitude adjustment. Let's define it. It's right there on your screen. A gratitude adjustment is when I choose to value what I have above what I want. That's still good to me the second time around. A gratitude adjustment is when I choose to value what I have above what I want. Can I put a secondary definition on that? A gratitude adjustment is when I tend to value where I am versus where I want to be. Yeah, I may not have the promotion yet, but I can thank him while I'm outside the door. No, it, it is valuing where I am juxtaposed where I want to be. And I asked the question on last week, and I got so many inboxes saying, Pastor, that question had me tripping all week. I know you're holy, but are you happy? I know you're holy, question, but are you happy? Can I say something to everybody listening to me, to, listening to me this morning? In 2024, I speak happiness over you. Oh, see, seven of y'all just should have said, I received that. I, I know that don't sound deep, and to some of y'all super spiritual saints, you so spiritual, you so, our uh, grandmama, heavenly minded that you know earthly good, that you can say all the time, long as I got me a crown and glory. My father said it like this, yes, I want a pie in the sky when I die, but I want something sound on the ground while I'm still around. No, no, it, it, it is this idea, help me God, I want to be happy. Y'all ain't got to say amen to me. That's only for three of y'all who got money. And when you didn't have money, you thought when you got the money, the money would bring happiness. Now you got a bank account full of money and still frustrated. God, I just want to be happy. Oh, that's for three of y'all who when you were single, you said stuff like, I can't wait to wear matching pajamas. I can't wait till I can buy them matching pajamas. Now y'all about to kill each other in the matching pajamas. I just want to be, somebody ought to just shout, happy. But can I free you? You're saying I want to be happy, but what you're saying unbeknownst to you is, Lord, I want to be whole. I wish above all things that you would prosper even as your soul prospers. Ooh, that's critical. Why? Because when we become preoccupied with what we want, we abuse what we have. When we become so fixated on where we're going, we miss the lessons in where we are. Can you put this in your notes? It's real simple. The key that will unlock the door where you're going is found where you are. That's good. The key to unlock the door where you're going is found where you are. You're not going to be a good boss if you fumble all the keys as an employee. You're not going to have a great marriage if you didn't properly appreciate the keys you learned being single. Because a person ain't going to make you whole. Michael, I'm preaching if you receive that. No, this is why, people, this is why statistics say that the average person who wins the lottery ends up broke in 10 months. It's because they didn't have the keys before they had it. And if you don't know what you're doing before you get it, you'll fumble it when you... Y'all ain't got to say amen to me today. I'm telling you we need a gratitude adjustment. And I told you that most of us feel gratitude, but we do not express gratitude. Then we tiptoed into our text today. We tiptoed into our text and we met a sister who ran into Jesus. Here's a woman who's a sinner right here in verse 36. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to dinner, to have dinner with him. So Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him and as, and 
She knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. Most historians believe this sister was a prostitute. She was a, put this in your notes if you don't mind, public sinner. That's rich. She is a public sinner. This is why church people fake. This is why your family fake. This is why I can't stand religious folks, because there are two types of sinners. You got public sinners. Some of y'all are going to help me preach this. And you got private sinners. And, and see, this is why I can't stand church folk, because what I've discovered is when I come to church, some of y'all private sinners are quick to judge public sinners like our sins ain't the same. Michael. So what do we see? We see one group of people scheming. We see another sister trying to get breakthrough. We see one group of people trying to set Jesus up. We see another sister just trying to get a touch from Jesus. This is why I thank God for my ushers. I thank God for my greeters. But whenever I go to church, since I can't control where I sit, the whole while they walking me down the aisle, I'm praying in the spirit. Because I got to say, Lord, I don't know who I'm going to sit by when I get to church. But just don't let me sit next to somebody who's so busy spectating that they block what I came to experience. That's why you ought to just bump them and tell them you lucked up and sat next to the right person today. Because I didn't come here plotting. I didn't come here scheming. I didn't even come to see you. I came to get a touch from God. That's why when you see me praising, don't put no circle around me, don't rub my back, don't start fanning me. No, if you knew what I've been through, you would be praising God with me. Why, PMJ, you can sit in here like you got it together. Baby, there are only two types of people sitting on your row. One of y'all who acting bougie because your stuff private. But then there's one of y'all who can say my stuff could have been public. And the fact that he's been keeping me, I just want to thank him because he's brought me. Y'all don't like me today. Y'all don't like me today, but it's cool in the game. No, this, this sister, this sister says, nah, nah, you mean to tell me she is, Michael, a little more up here, Jay. She is not invited. She invites herself. This is critical why, PMJ, because here she is. I'm finna run with no invitation, but she the only one who has a different conversation. Y'all miss what I just said. She's the only one with no invitation, but she's also the only one with a different conversation. Pastor Mike, I'm a scholar and you wrong right here because nowhere in the text does she talk. No, she does not talk with her lips, but her tears start doing the talking. I'm preaching to three of y'all. You don't understand that level of conversation until you've been in that level of pain. Where you so frustrated and so upset and so hurt that you're trying to verbalize it, but all you can do is cry. Thank you, James, but I'm so grateful God knows the language. Am I preaching to anybody? Am I preaching to anybody? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So I'll I never forget... I never forget, it's two types of mad people, okay? I, I, I'm not scared of the mad folk who talk a lot, you know? You know the person who get mad? Oh, you better shut up talking to me. I'm going to break my foot. Oh, I'm going to be on you like white on rice. Oh, you don't want these problems. I dare you to do. I ain't, whenever I see somebody doing all that, I relax. But the person who don't say nothing, and all of a sudden they just go mute. And then all of a sudden, that one glory tear start coming down their eye. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Give me a hug. Give, give me a hug. Because you may kill all of us in here. I'm so sorry. You want to know why? Because they didn't have to say with their mouth. Their tears. I'm not preaching to everybody. Only three of y'all who've been crying lately. Only three of y'all who done had to shed a tear because you've been good to people who ain't been good to you back. Only three of y'all who done had to shed a tear because God's actually doing what he said he was going to do for you. And people don't realize that you should be happy when he bless you. But sometimes your anxiety take over and you be tripping over God. Is this going to last? Is this? Am I preaching to anybody? And she starts worshiping with no invitation. Sister start crying. She's worshiping. And I like this. Why, PMJ? This is so critical because she's the sinner. She's 
the sinner. I, I, I got asked, I was on a conference call this week and pastors from around the country, uh, they, they fly in during the week. Some of them come in at the end of the year just to see church and kind of hang. And I was on a call, they kind of caught me slipping, called me, hey man, what you doing? You busy? I said, no, I'm just sitting with the family. You got a minute? I said, yeah. Next thing I know, I just heard six voice, hey PMJ, hey PMJ. I'm like, hey, whoa, whoa. What's up? They was like, man, we're trying to argue. And, you know, we're trying to grow our churches. What type of church would you want? I said, I like my church. They said, why? I said, I said, I feel like I got a good sinner church. And they was like, no, your church should be holy. I, I said, no, we are, we are ascribing to be holy. I said, but I personally think, uh-oh, I like sinners better than saints. They, they said, what you mean? I said, I said, I said you got to listen closely. I said, saints throughout the Bible were the ones doing the persecuting. It was the saints that was trying to kill Jesus. It was the saints that was trying to stone that woman. It was the saints who told Bartimaeus to be quiet. It was the saints who made the woman with the issue of blood feel like she was inadequate. It was the saints who told you, you need to get your stuff together like they didn't have their stuff messed up either. It was the saints who would sit on the front row with all white on but had black hearts. It was the saints who would stand across the front and lead devotion, but then go outside and smoke and cuss everybody out. It was the saints who would lead the songs but be the messiest people in the choir. Don't give me the saints. Give me somebody who can say, I ain't got it all together. But Father, here I am, humbly as I know. Because just because you sin don't mean you ain't a saint. No, you fallen. That don't mean you can't. I, I, I'm finna run. There, there go two folk right there. For, there go two folk. Five. I only need y'all five. Forget the rest of y'all. I want to prophesy, devil. You should have killed me when I was down. But these last 30 or so days of 2023 are dedicated to me getting up. You don't know who you sit next to. Just help them up on their feet real quick right there and say, I just picked you up in the natural because the Bible said first the natural, then the spiritual. So this time I'm picking your peace up. I'm picking your favor up. I'm picking your joy up. I'm picking your finances up. You ought to slap five people high five and shout, get up. Sit down. Sit down. Get up, get on up, get up, get on up, stay on the scene like a praise machine. Y'all gonna make me have church by myself in here. No, no, this sister is a sinner. And, and hear me, I asked you this question on last week. Be careful when you become familiar with who has favor. Yeah, no, this is critical. Why? Because they didn't recognize who was in the house. And I pray we haven't got used to who we should be grateful for. Nah, nah, every parent, listen to me, I don't care what your child do dumb, and they do some dumb stuff. As long as they got breath in their body, they got a chance to get it together. You got to be grateful for that. No, 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 I want to ask you this question. Have you become familiar with God? Playboy, that's crazy. Have you become so familiar with God? I, I, I like giving y'all simple examples, okay? Simple examples. Who drove to church today? All right, boom. All right. Who got out of bed this morning? Okay, okay. Who's sitting in here right now? All right, there we go. And never pray the moment you woke up. Never pray before you turned your ignition. Didn't pray when you got here safely. Because we take God. My, I'm, I'm so grateful I got old parents. I, I'm old grandparents. My granddaddy, we, we, everybody that have a car growing up, millennials, y'all young people, 20s, 30s, 
y'all all got y'all own cars, everybody in the house. No, when we grew up, like somebody in the family had a car, you know what I'm saying? So you would just sit there and wait on grandmama or somebody to come through so they can just take you where you need to be. And we would get in the car with my granddaddy, but I used to get frustrated because being in the car with my granddaddy, you didn't just leave. <laughs> Baby girl, I know this hard to believe because you, you probably got your push start, right? So you get in your car and you put your foot on the brake and you press that button and it, vroom, 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 you put your music on and then you gone. No, granddaddy would get in the car. He would adjust his mirror, make sure did nobody touch his seat. He would put his seatbelt on. He would look at us and say, y'all ready? Yeah. Then before he crunked the car, he would say, Lord, we thank you for traveler's grace. Y'all don't even know how to have church. And arrival's mercy. Y'all missed it. Traveler's grace. God, I thank you that you're going to grace me to get there. And arrival's mercy. Yet we do all this stuff and don't even feel the need to say thank you. <laughs> what am I talking about? Because this sister cries. Wipes his feet with her hair. I want to read verse 39 to you. Put it on the screen if you don't mind. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, I'm finna run. I want y'all to preach. See, I got to train my church. I want y'all to look at scriptures like I look at scriptures. So in the next six years, if I read a scripture, y'all can already see where I'm going, okay? So, so watch this. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, saw the sister wiping his feet with her hair, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, talking about Jesus, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She's, look at the saints, she's a sinner. Let's stop right there. This is my frustration with church. How is this sister getting a breakthrough, yet you still judging her? You know, th this is why I have to be careful. This is why I have to be careful. I never forget when our church was young and we had just started out. All these young people were coming to church and did nobody have no church clothes. So my couple old saints would be running through the church full speed, putting lap handkerchiefs on people's legs, right? So, so say young ladies would come to church and they would get there early, excited about church. They would sit on the front row, but if their skirt was too short, they would take out running. I'm pre I'm literally, praise the Lord, say, they would run full speed, boom, boom, boom and put it all over their legs. And I'm sitting here looking like, I tell you what, don't cover nobody legs till you buy them some clothes. Y'all missed miss what I just said. I said, instead of us focusing on the fact that she in her 20s and rather be in church than in the world, you caught up on what she looked like versus what she's expecting. Michael, that's why you might see young brothers in my church with fitted hats on. That's why you may see young brother in my church with a scuff cap on. That's why you're not going to see me, brother, remove your hat. No, I'm not concerned with what's on your head. I'm concerned with what's in your heart. I don't believe a hat going to keep you out of heaven. Because for years they wore church clothes but didn't have no God in them. Y'all, y'all, y'all miss what I just said. They had on full stockings was still full of hell. Y'all miss what I just said. No, it ain't about clothes, it's about souls. You can come as you are, you won't stay as you are. They missed the fact that this sister was finally getting her breakthrough. Why, PMJ? Because there are certain people who like you better broken. Yeah, you'll be surprised how many people in your family like you better crazy. No, it makes them comfortable about them being stagnant. There are certain people like you broke. They like the fact that you broke because they get to say stuff now like we ain't never, ain't none of us got no money. Ain't none of us happy with our jobs. Ain't none of us going doing nothing this year. Devil is a liar. I'm getting out that category this year. Y'all miss what I just said. Matter of fact, before you get out of it, death and life lie in the power of the tongue. The next time they say ain't none of us got no money, pause, you ain't got no money. I got money you don't even know about. Y'all miss what I just said right there. Now you just gotta change your conversation. Am I preaching to anybody? Look at this, look at this, look at this. She's a sinner, verse 40. Then Jesus answered his thoughts. I'm run, I'm, I'm done. I'm done, y'all, I'm done. I need a better church. I want Baptist church. I'm, I'm so tired of y'all. 
I'm, I, 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 man, I'm, 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 I'm finna get to the point in my life why, cause I'd rather wear a suit now. I'm gonna get me a suit and a, a whole robe. I don't even wanna, I'm, I'm, I'm finna cut, I'm finna do, I, I'm taking these earrings, I'm tired of y'all. I be trying to be myself and, and I be trying to preach, but then y'all just be sitting here looking at me sometimes like more. That, that's how y'all do me. And God said it's your season, more. It's your time, more. You're going to another level, more. It's gonna happen. No. Y'all don't see what just happened? Go back if y'all missed it. Go back a verse. If you go back a verse, you'll see what he says. When the Pharisee who invited him saw what she was doing, he said to himself. But then we get to verse 40. In verse 40, Jesus answered his thoughts. Y'all missed what I just said. Y'all missed what I just said. You thought you were safe because it didn't come out your mouth. God said, I didn't like the fact that it was in your head. I'm preaching to three of y'all. Why does this matter to me? This matters to me because as a man thinketh, so is he. Jesus addresses his thought process. Put this in your notes. Because there is no room for a bad mindset in the kingdom. Y'all miss what I just said. There is no room for a bad mindset. 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 Bruh, bruh, I, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. My boys can cuss me out. I'm going to get upset. May hit one of them, but we can bounce back from that, okay? If, if they don't clean their room, come on, boys, clean your room. If they don't, come on, y'all, come on. If I see a bad mindset, it'll drive me up a wall. Oh my God, it'll drive me up a wall. Let me hear them say something like, well, Dad, you know, they don't let people, they don't let. No, no, flip your mindset. Flip your mindset. Well, you know, they're going to play their favorite players. I don't want to hear that. Don't, 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 don't transfer the blame. Just say, I ain't did enough. I see, see, the proper mindset takes responsibility while other people play victim. Michael, the proper mindset takes responsibility where the other person would play victim. See, this, the bad mindset said, they did this to me. A proper mindset would say, God, help me make better decisions to not pick people who don't appreciate the value that I bring to them. See, only mindset people caught that right there. Some of y'all like, nah, they, they fought. No, if they did you dirty, sometimes you gotta stop and take responsibility for the fact that you pick wrong. Y'all don't like me today. Y'all don't like me today. No, you get fired off a job and then you tell people the devil busy. No, you was late. That's a bad mindset. Jesus answered his faults. That's a paradigm shift. Paradigm shift is a shift in your mindset. So I might not be needing to ask the question to our church, what have you been doing? I might need to ask, what have you been thinking? <laughs> I'd be preaching to me. He answered his thoughts and said, Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. Go ahead, teacher, Simon replied. Pause. Do you see the juxtaposition between what he thinks and how he acts? He says, go ahead, teacher, which shows honor. But his thoughts were dishonorable. Some of y'all think people with you because of what they say. You need to start fasting so you can discern what they've been. <clears throat> Look, Jesus told the man, a man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to another, but neither of them could repay. Jesus answers his negative thoughts with a parable. So he kindly forgave Jesus Christ, them both, counseling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? Simon answered, I suppose the one whom he counseled the larger debt. Jesus says, that's right. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Jesus said, the, the, prof, the, the, the Pharisee in his head thought, if he was really a prophet, you know what a prophet is. If he really had a prophetic gift, he would be able to tell this ain't no Christian rubbing his feet. 
This is a sinner. Jesus answers his thoughts and says, Simon, he said, I got something I need to tell you. Simon being fake says, yes, teacher. He says, one person had $500 worth of debt. Another person had $50 worth of debt. Neither one of them could pay their bills. I then forgave both of them. Who you think is the most grateful? Simon says, the one with the most debt. Jesus says, that's right. You missed it. Maybe you sitting in this chair being stuck up. And maybe she on the floor giving me glory. Because y'all debt ain't the same. <clears throat> Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, I can't shout for you right here. I don't know how much stuff you needed him to forgive you for, but tell him I got a laundry list of stuff God has done for me. What if I told you the crazier your praise, the crazier the hell he had to pull you out of? That's why when you see me shout, I'm not shouting for what he's done. I'm shouting because he forgave me for every mess I put my... The debt ain't the same. The gratitude ain't the same. That's Chris. The gratitude ain't the same. Michael, the gra this is why I can't stand, I'm out of time, I can't stand folk with amnesia, Christians with amnesia. Y'all be having selective amnesia. Y'all be sitting in church, walking your butt around like you the reason you where you at. Like you got yourself out of that situation. See, this is why every now and again, you got to have a flashback and say, God, if it had not been. If it had not been for the Lord on my side. Tell me where would I be? Yeah, I, I, yeah don't even. I, 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 I. Then they got an attitude that said, "You know, he kept my enemies away. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. Oh, and he rocked me." Battered and won. So if it had not been for the Lord, tell me where. And you can't stop where you are right now and say thank you. I said, you that stuck up, you can't stop and say thank you. You worried about who's looking at you, you can't say thank you. You ought to take 30 seconds and just tell the Lord thank you for every mountain that he brought you over, for every valley that he took you through. Millions didn't make it. Y'all gone. Woo! Oh, I want to say thank you. But this all she. All Jesus is saying is, they done had to forgive me. The gratitude ain't the same. And because the gratitude ain't the same, sometimes the praise ain't the same. Michael, don't judge my public praise if you don't know my private pain. Don't judge what I do in this church if you don't know how he kept me outside of this place. You ought to just shout, God's been good to me. He's been. Hear me. I'm, I'm sending you home. So I need a gratitude adjustment. Where he tells Simon 
And this is not the Simon who wrote. This ain't Simon who become Peter. This is another Simon. What he tells this Pharisee is, I need you to catch this. He tells this Pharisee, I need you to catch this. Your gratitude ain't right. Your gra yes, Pastor Mike, these bills taking me through there. You got a roof over your head. I just can't stand nobody on my job. You got one. I just can't do these kids right now. Do you? I got a sister in the back right now working the screens who would give her left leg to have one child. Year after year, seed sold after seed sold, prayer after prayer, and nothing. And you got full and just drop them off anywhere. Where your gratitude at? Woo, where your gratitude at? Well, you know, I, uh, this car just eat gas. You got one. You so busy, fixated on what you want. You are abusing. Can I ask you a question? For those of y'all who've been rocking with me, have you seen any difference in how we preach and worship here versus how we worship at Barsdale? Because we didn't abuse where we were. We had people standing outside in the rocks. Hey, how you doing? We had people in a small lobby hugging you 55 times. Because when you learn to be grateful where you are, God will promote you where you're going. Somebody shout gratitude. Here we go. A couple things gratitude doing. We're going home. Number one, put this in your notes. Gratitude redirects our pain into peace. <clears throat> gratitude redirects our pain into peace. Is it on the screen? There it is right there. Gratitude redirects our pain into peace. I'm finna run. I'm finna run. I'm finna run. Okay, when I come to work during the week, I come from that way right there, okay? That means the church is on my left. So the first opening to the parking lot, I bust that first left, right? Every day. I come to work, boom, bust that first left. You want to know what frustrates me? Five days a week, I bust that first left. Every Sunday, out of habit, I get ready to bust that left, and it's a whole police truck. <laughs> Who know what I'm talking about? Where I turn. Because of traffic, he redirects. Put that in the notes, Leslie. He, he redirects me. I know you used to come in this way, but so it won't hinder what everybody else doing. Because if I let you do it, everybody going to do it. I'm going to just redirect you to a better route. So what happens? Your pain that normally cripples your peace. What gratitude does, it says pain. Don't let it get to their heart. Go that way. Because the first place of ungratefulness is your mind. But the problem is you allowed your ungratefulness in your head to come to your heart. Why do you think Jesus checked his thoughts? He said, I'm going to check it while it's in conception. Because if I let it manifest in your spirit, you're never going to be different. So what happens with you is life gets so difficult that in your head you start thinking, this always like this, I ain't going to ever come out. But what gratitude says is, hey, Go that way. Y'all, y'all, go that way. Y'all missed it. Go that way. Why, PMJ? Peace does not just come from right praying. Peace also comes from right thinking. Oh, my God. I don't know how you didn't put that in your phone. I don't know how you didn't put that in your phone. Peace does not just come from right praying. Peace also comes from right thinking. What's the use in being an eye? What, what's the use in being in an hour-long prayer session only to get in your car and start thinking negative. Michael, why wake up at 7 o'clock, do your hair, put on your clothes, and drive across town to church only to leave here and instantly be negative? Gratitude redirects. Can, can I make it make sense? Gratitude is the traffic agent and the busyness of your mind. 
Gratefulness go this way. Ungratefulness go that way. If you don't have a traffic light, what's going to happen? Why, put this in your notes. It's not just about fighting not to feel bad. It's about fighting not to think about the faults that make you feel bad. I just want to feel better. I just need you to think better. I just, I just so much on me. I just want to feel better. I want you to feel better too, but baby girl, us talking for an hour ain't going to do it until you think better. Okay? Here, here it is. Here it is. Ephesians 4 and 20, 21. I want to go a different route because I could say be transformed by the renewing of your mind, but I want to go Ephesians. Look at this. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Look at verse 23. Instead, I want to focus on verse 23. Let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Look at, look at it from the NASB version, verse 23. And that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. I need you to screenshot that if you have to or whatever you got to do or put that in your notes. I need you to, Ephesians 4 and 23 is powerful. And that you be, NASB 95 edition, renewed in the spirit of your mind. Renew means re, again, make new, or like in redo, to do again. I want to ask all my fellas, give me a what, what? All my fellas who know how to change your oil, give me a what, what? All right, everybody who don't know how to change your oil, give me a what, what? All right, so it's more people in the room who don't know how to do it then do know how to do it, which is why there's a place you can go to that will renew your... <laughs> so, so what I'm saying is, it's hard to remain grateful when you're running on the same mindset. You got to renew it. So, so I want to talk about this. I want to talk about this. God didn't inspire Paul to write that we are to renew the spirit of the mind by mistake. He didn't say renew in your mind. He said renew the spirit of your mind. He didn't say renew your mind. He didn't say renew your mind. He didn't say renew your mind. He said renew the spirit of your mind. This indicates that there's a difference between the mind and the spirit of the mind. Michael, there's a difference between the mind and the spirit of a mind. The spirit of a mind is a place where the deeper thinking takes place. We also call this the subconscious. Oh, we going there today. And I'm going to let you go on this part. So the spirit of the mind is a place where the deeper thinking takes place. We also call it the what? Subconscious. It is the place in your mind that controls your actions even when you are not conscious of what you're doing. It is what scholars call a regulatory apparatus. It is a regulatory apparatus. It is a built-in judge watching and recording and evaluating your every move. The spirit of your mind is your subconscious. It is your default setting. It is what you've been doing for so long that if you lose your mind, the spirit of your mind take over. That's why when you, that's why you told your mind on your way there, I'm not going to do nothing crazy. But then when you got there, you black out, do something crazy. Then when you have to explain it, they ask you what you do. I don't know. It's, it's just like I lost. Because whenever you lose your mind, the spirit of your mind take over. Let's go deeper. Learning to drive a stick shift is an example. One doesn't learn how to drive a stick overnight, but over months and sometimes years, it becomes so automatic that you do it without thinking. Being upset, complaining, ungrateful in your spirit now is your automatic default setting. Gratitude instantly redirects the traffic of your negative thoughts. So what I'm trying to get you to realize is ease up on yourself. Being negative is programmed in you. If you was raised around negative parents, lived around negative friends, you had no idea 
that your subconscious was being conditioned that your default setting is negativity. Michael. If you don't change your ringtone, you get a factory ringtone. The factory ringtone for T-Mobile is what? Doom, 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 doom. Which means they don't have time to personalize every phone. So they gonna give everybody the same amount of peace. They gonna give everybody the same amount of joy. They gonna give everybody the same amount of faith. What you do with your phone determines what it becomes. And what I'm saying is, you've had so much negativity for so long that telling God thank you now has to be forced. But feeling bad comes easy. Ooh. <laughs> That's why acting a fool comes natural. And saying I'm sorry and walking away is hard. That's why if I play some music right now, dun 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 dun, whoa, whoa, whoa. naturally you gon'. But then if I said, we're blessed, then it takes a minute. Because in my natural flesh dwelleth no good thing. This is why Paul said the good I would do. I do if not. Listen to the, but the bad. Listen to the language. I find myself. How do you find yourself doing bad if you the one doing it? It's because sometimes your, your spirit of your mind takes over your mind and your mind controls your body, which is why even one fool said, my mind is telling me no. <laughs> Am I preaching to anybody? Which is why you say to yourself, I don't even know why I'm doing this. It's because the spirit of your mind, which is your subconscious, has been conditioned for negativity. But the devil shouldn't have let you come to church. Because now I speak scripture over your mind to think on these things. Whatsoever's lovely, whatsoever's kind, whatsoever's pure, whatsoever's of good report, which means I got to go. I'm out of time. You can play soft. Which means the same way if I want to get my body right, I got to work out. I need to work my mind. That's crazy. So watch this. If I want to drop weight, I need to run, right? Get out there and walk. Think what they say. You just need to walk. Watch this. Exercise. Change your diet. Now let's apply that to our mind. Exercise. Speak some over your life. God, I thank you right now in Jesus' name. God, I speak right now. This is a positive day. This is a great day. This is a good day. I am not negative. I am not, uh, I, I come against any spoke, bad spoken words. I am not what I used to. You see what I'm saying? Every day. Okay. Okay. Old people. All us, myself, you got to be old. All y'all young folk ain't going to get this. Y'all don't. I don't even know how y'all date no more. Y'all just, I'm going to teach you on dating next year. It's going to blow your mind. I don't think y'all really know what affection is no more for real. Like y'all just be tripping. All right. We did stuff like this. Oh, I'm going to take you back. Who remember when you had to kiss at the red light? Come on, raise your hand. I like you didn't kiss at, th thank you. They got all old for you. I remember that. Remember you being in the car, you like, at every red light, we're going to kiss. You remember? I'm in that car. Here, here, here. The, the, the light be green. You slow that thing down. Oh. Or fellas, have you been working out and you say, hey, we're going to do push-ups during the commercials? You were setting up a system. I want to ask you a question. What's your system? <laughs> Here it is, every time I eat, I'm gonna think right. 
I gotta eat lunch. I speak today as a good day. I come against negativity. I come against bad thoughts. I am grateful. Make a list of what you need to be grateful for. Watch this. You 25, that's 25 years sometimes of negativity. You're not gonna change that with one message. You know, y'all wanna laugh? I still look out the window every Sunday and run and get them and say, hey, come to the office real quick. Anybody out there? Now, you would think I would be walking around here like, oh, it's going to be crazy today. But in my head, I've seen so many churches rise and fall and this church do them. And people in my, I be trying to get over this negative thought that this won't last. So you know what I say today? Today is a good day. Whether it's one or 1,000, God, we do what we do. God, we pray today that you're going to move like, I'm learning to be grateful. Number one, but number two, gratitude. Put this in your notes, I'm going to go fast. Restores our joy for the journey. Oh, it makes it worth it. Your greatest gift to your destiny is not about where you're going, but who you become along the way. The greatest gift to your destiny is not about where you're going. It's about who you become along the way. Gratitude makes you understand your joy for the journey. One of the enemy's strategy in this season is not to destroy you, but to drain you. What if the devil's strategy in this season of your life is not to destroy you, but to drain you? He just wants you so stressed out, you don't even enjoy the journey. He wants you so tired by the time you get there, you ain't got no strength to enjoy it. <laughs> Number three, gratitude restricts entry for the enemy. What if I told you that gratitude not only makes us feel good, but it also keeps our mind guarded? <laughs> gratitude is powerful because it is both my emotional medicine and my spiritual weapon catch that? It's my emotional weapon, I'm sorry, emotional medicine and my spiritual weapon. So when I'm feeling down, I can take some gratitude. But it also guards me from the devil coming into my life. Number four, gratitude releases our favor for the future. Gratitude releases our favor for the future. Last quote, without favor, you always have to force it. But with favor, it will always flow. That's rich. So as we go home this week, I want to ask you a question. What am I most like in this story? Let's, let's look at it. Are you most like Simon, the homeowner, who's religiously entitled, critical, and judgmental? Are you like Judas, the jealous disciple, greedy, jealous, and self-centered? I never even told you about Judas. Judas was so caught up on the box, the alabaster box that she broke, counting her coin, he didn't see her deliverance. <laughs> when she broke the box, Jesus like, she'd have lost her mind. You know how much we could have did with that box? She should have gave that. Or are you like the woman, grateful just to be in God's presence? Father, I ask in this moment that if there's any negativity in our spirit, that we'll arm it with gratefulness. I thank you for this journey called life, God. Ups, downs, ends, out, peaks and valleys. Wouldn't change it for nothing in the world. God, because the journey is what made me. God, I thank you for being raised in that little Baptist church in Kingston taught me how to serve. It taught me hymns that I never forget. It taught me a deeper level of appreciation for community. God, I thank you for my wild season in college. It taught me that you are a keeper and you'll never leave my side. I thank you for the ups. I thank you for the downs. God, help us to become more grateful. God, don't help us to become more grateful by giving us more problems. <laughs> But give us a revelation, a right now instantaneous revelation of all that's going good around us. 
so we can operate in gratefulness. God, our answer to you will always be yes because without you, none of this would be possible. So God, I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for what you're doing. And I also thank you for what you are about to do. And I submit to your will. I submit to your word. I submit to your way. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Jump up, clap your hands if you don't mind. Hallelujah. Did you get anything out of that today? Come on, clap your hands a little louder right there. Every head bowed. You may be here today and you don't know Jesus. You don't know Jesus. Pastor Mike, I'm hearing you preach and truth of the matter is I haven't been as grateful as I should be. God, I just want to, number one, give my life to Christ. Number two, I want to rededicate my life to Christ. I've been saved, Pastor Mike, but I kind of, I just need to renew my faith in a sense. And number three, God, I'm just looking for a great church home, man. If that's you, I'm not going to call you out and put you on the spot. You just want to give your life to Christ right where you are. Just repeat after me. Say, Lord, come into my heart. Make me over again. I confess with my mouth. I believe with my heart that you rose from the grave with all power in your hand. And right now, by faith, I am saved. Wow. That was incredible. Incredible yeah. word, Pastor Mike always brings an incredible word. Maybe you were blessed by that word today. You want to make a decision Amen. to give your life to Christ or maybe join Rock City Church and take that next step. There's information on the screen right now. You can text HOME to 28950 yeah. and our team will be reaching out with you this week to connect with you, to talk with you, to pray with you. We're so yes. excited. We do not take a soul for granted. So Amen. be sure if you want to make a decision to take that next step, that information is on the screen right now. Yeah, and the thing about it, Pastor D, you don't want to hear a word like that and yes. not get seed in the ground. Come on. And we oftentimes say that you don't give to your church, but you give through your church Absolutely. here at Rock City. So you see the details right below. You can text the give. Yeah. I rock the amount to 28950. Absolutely. I got seed in the ground. Yeah. yeah. Listen, this Thanksgiving, I'm, I know it's the Sunday after Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. but what good is it? to receive forgiveness if you don't want to give generously. Mm. And so we really want to challenge everyone in this season where it can become so self-centered about what you want or what yeah. you don't have, that one of the greatest ways to receive a blessing Amen. is to become a blessing. And so be sure to get seed in the ground. And we thank you so much for tuning in this week. Don't forget to join us in the morning, Devo Energy. You didn't say it right. What I said, how, how I was supposed to say it. You said it's too regular. All right, don't forget to, don't, hold on. <clears throat> Guys, stay with Don't up. forget uh -huh. to join us yeah. in the morning for Devo Energy. Energy. 720 in the morning, Central Standard Time. That's right. Facebook, YouTube, we cannot wait to be with you. And we pray that you enjoy this week. You be blessed. You take care. You got anything else? No, listen, on behalf of Pastor Mike, Lady J, and all of us here at Rock City, yep. we love you. God bless you. We'll see you real soon. God bless you. Peace.